Give it a spin. Give it a spin. No, no, it's a Trek bike. Von Traeger. Von Traeger wheels. Here's the BMC. The BMC. That's very ordinary. The old Trifox today. Still nice to ride. No doubt you've noticed that your rear hub on your bike sounds one way and another rider on his rear hub can sound different. Why is this so? Well there's two main reasons. Number one the clutch inside might be different than yours and number two the sort of lubrication inside. Now can you change the sound of your hub to sound different for whatever reason you want to do it? It can be done and let's show you how. This Reynolds Strike set of wheels on the rear hub Pull it apart and you can see it has little spring and poles. Little poles bounce up and down on a spring. And on the inside of the hub is a ring of teeth there and they grip on the teeth. So that's called spring and pole. If like these Reynolds strike wheels you've got the spring and pole mechanism, there's not a lot you can do to change that mechanism, but you can still change the sound by lubrication. So we'll get to that in a minute. However, like this set of wheels, if you've got the star clutch inside, you can change the sound of the mechanism itself. The star clutch is slowly taking over from the old spring and pole design, so we may as well get familiar with it. Whether it's a DT Swiss hub like this one, or a copy thereof, the clutch is basically the same, with slight variations. So let's have a look at the clutch on the Super Team wheels. This is the free hub body, and it has splines in the back of it, called the gear ring. Next is an outer spring and an outer star ring. Then a spacer washer. Then an inner spring and inner star ring. And lastly, a ring keeper inbuilt into the hub shell, which the inner star ring and spring slots into. When you pedal, Two opposing surfaces lock together, transferring your power from free hub to hub shell. With the pull and spring ratchet, the load is through small points of contact. However, with the star ring ratchet, the load is spread over a much larger contact area. This makes for a more reliable and durable clutch, easier to clean and regrease, and you can change the star rings for more or less points of engagement. So why increase the points of engagement in a clutch? It's for a more reactive start from a very slow or stop position. Your cranks or pedals will travel less of a distance before the clutch engages and transfers your power to the rear wheel. These clutches are useful in trials or serious obstacle mountain bike riding. For most mountain bike riding, gravel and road riding, Having more points of engagement in a clutch makes no perceivable difference or advantage to your riding. With an 18 tooth ratchet, there's 20 degrees of movement before the clutch engages. With a 64 tooth, there's only 5.6 degrees of movement before the clutch engages. So the angle determines how far you need to turn your crank arm before the power is transferred to your rear wheel. An 18 tooth ratchet will give you this much movement of the crank arm, a 54 tooth a smaller amount and a 64 tooth even smaller before your power goes through to your rear wheel. So if we're not doing extreme obstacle riding why would you want more points of engagement in your rear clutch? It seems it's all about how it sounds. <laughs> this one to put it together Per revolution, every time the wheel goes around, 
there's 36 engagements of the ratchet. So if you put the valve up the top, and go around all the way around to the valves up the top again, you'll get 36 clicks. You can count them if you want. Now most of the time you want to change the number of engagements to maybe 48, 52, 60, and you can do that by buying a little kit like this. This particular kit here will change the engagements per revolution to 60. All you need to do is take out the mechanism inside your hub we've got already, the 36, and replace it with the 60. So pull your clutch apart, the free hub body off, the outer spring and star ring. You can leave the spacer washer on the axle or remove it. It's going to go back on anyhow. And then take out the inner star ring and spring. In a typical kit, you get the inner and outer star rings, the inner and outer springs, and some spacer washers, which you may or may not need to use. Now, if there's nothing wrong with the old springs, you can put them back in. So the inner spring, then the new 60 tooth inner star ring, the new 60 tooth outer star ring, the outer spring. Don't forget the axle sleeve if you've taken it off. And then finally the free hub body. and after, slow and fast. Woo, she certainly screams. There is a big difference. Now both these hubs use the Star Ratchet system, but they're different. This one's a genuine DT Swiss 180. And when you look at the hub, you pull it apart, you can't take the last ratchet ring out. It's stuck in there. You have to actually use a special tool, put it on, to remove it and then put the new one back in there. So you'll need to use a genuine DT Swiss ratchet system to replace it. So for this rear hub on this super team wheel, this kit from AliExpress fits perfectly, it's compatible. Whereas it's not compatible with this one, the DT Swiss 180. So you need to make sure you get one that fits a DT Swiss 180 if you'll get those sort of hubs. So make sure that the kit that you're buying is compatible with the sort of hub that you've got. A second way you can change the sound of your clutch is by varying a lubricant. If you put a thin amount of lubricant in, then it'll sound louder. And if you put a thicker amount of lubricant in, it'll sound softer. So for this one, we've got thin grease and a small amount in there, and it sounds like this. So now we'll put thicker grease in and see what happens. Greases are rated in thickness from triple zero to six. If you want your clutch to sound loud, use a triple zero grease. Don't use oil as it's too fluid and will slowly spin out of your clutch, leaving it almost void of any lubrication and damage will occur. And for a quieter clutch, use a grease rated around three. Conversely, don't use very firm greases as this may slow the return spring action and when you put on the power, the clutch may not fully engage to the hub. So greases with thickness from triple zero to three are good, but four to six are too thick. We're going to use boating grease. It's about as thick as you can go with this sort of clutch. So smear it on the ring keeper. Here I'm using a cotton bud, but you can also use a small painter's brush. Put the axle sleeve, if you've got one, in your clutch. It will help keep the star rings and springs central. Grease the inner star ring, both the ring keeper splines and the teeth on its face. The same on the outer star ring. If you don't want to get grease all over your fingers like I'm doing, wear some disposable gloves. If you wear ordinary gloves, you only have to go and wash them. It usually grease ruins gloves, so disposable ones are a good idea. Pop on the outer spring, you don't really need grease on there. And finally, the gear ring in the free hub. Push it all back together and you're done. And fast. With the grease in the clutch. Can't hear it at all hardly. Very quiet. So if that's how you like your clutch, you can sneak up on people and you can talk to your riders next to you when you freewheel. 
not annoying, then put a bit of grease in your clutch. Now, can you change the number of points of engagement in a spring and pull clutch? To change the number of engagements per revolution of a spring and pull clutch, you can't just put a free hub body with more or less pulls into your hub. It probably won't be compatible. Some free hubs may look the same, but chances are they're not. A lot of hubs are compatible with Shimano free hubs, whilst other brands use their own proprietary free hub. Best to search the brand and model of your hub and see if you can find a compatibility chart. So you can change the number of points of engagement with a spring and pull clutch, but it's nowhere near as easy as changing the point of engagement with a star ring clutch. So going back to our Reynolds strike wheel, this is the one with the spring and pull system in there. It has a it has a small amount of fairly thin grease, medium to thin grease, and this is what it sounds like. So now let's thicken it up and see if we can quieten it down. Just using this clutch as an example, if you find upon opening your clutch that the old grease is a bit dark in colour, and this can happen both to the spring and pull and the ring type, it would be advisable to clean the old grease out before repacking it with the new grease. So remove the springs and poles, sometimes they simply pull out with your fingers, or you can use tweezers or needle-nosed pliers. Try not to lose any of these small parts, especially if it falls onto your floor. You may never find it again. Use some degreaser, a sprayer works effectively. Apply it sparingly to the greased areas and with a toothbrush, flick the old grease away from the cassette body. This avoids getting degreaser into the bearing. With the springs and poles, give them a bit of a pre-clean with a clean rag. Then give the springs and poles a wash in a small container with degreaser or isopropyl alcohol. Using degreaser and a toothbrush, you can scrub out the ring keeper in the hub. And a final scrub with isopropyl alcohol. Once everything is clean and dry, using a grease gun with a needle tip is very effective in getting the right amount of grease into the spaces it's required. Grease all the spaces where the spring and poles fit into the cassette body. Now you might find tweezers or needle nose pliers are handy here. Place the springs and poles carefully back into their original positions. Then one by one give the poles a bit of a press and make sure they're springing back correctly. Now all the springs and poles are in place, you need to grease where the spring contacts the pole underneath and give it a bit of a working so that the grease spreads at that joint. Now depending on how loud or soft you want your clutch to be, spread the right grease into the ring keeper. And put that same grease on the clutch poles and put everything back together. So our Reynolds wheel clutch is nicely greased up now and this is what it sounds like. Significantly quieter. So whether you've got a or a or even a you can change the sound of your clutch by either swapping out the clutch or changing the lubricant within the clutch or even both. Like an old lady. Yes, 
how steep it is. No trucks allowed down here. Uh oh, we've come to the end. Woo. So we're at Mount Bold again, but this time we're at uh, a lookout and the dam's down the other side. <laughs> 500 mil higher. <laughs> so if you're scared of heights, don't come here. Uh, <laughs> three metres lower than Mount Everest. I don't know if the phone picks it up, but if you see a blue haze, that's uh, oil from gum trees. It makes a sort of bluey colour.